Hello? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm really good, thank you. Yeah. Mmm. Really? So what did you think about Saturday's episode of Doctor Who? Oh, Ty, it's science fiction. It's supposed to be far-fetched. Of course, I forgot Mr. Reclamation Wars. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine it? Traveling through time with the Doctor. It would be amazing. You could go to the moon or Mars. Uranus, yes, I know it's a planet. You have such a limited view for one with such sci-fi vision. Oh my giddy Anne. A big blue British telephone box just appeared in my lounge. Where are you going to take me, Doctor? Of the pudding brains. Will traveling in the TARDIS make me young, thin, and beautiful? I'm not a medical worker. I gotta go, Ty. Roll the opening titles. And who said time travel is not possible? Hello, America, and welcome to Xandermonium, the talk show that gets you talking. I'm your host, Xander Gibb, and on today's show, we will be getting a glimpse into the news according to comedian Sarah Boyles. We'll be going out onto the streets of the Boogie Down to find out exactly what you think about what's going on in the USA. And we'll also be getting a little glimpse into Salam Kapsaski's new movie, Spy Darlings. More to come in a mere moment. As always, you can interact with me via Twitter. You can tweet me at Xander Gibb, X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B, capital X, capital G. Make sure you follow and keep up to date with what's going on in a world of mind-blowing information. And now it's time for Xander's Soapbox. <laughs> So it was another interesting week in the house of Gibb when my prayers were answered and my car passed its inspection. Yay! I, however, did not win the lotto and was not able to buy a new car and a swanky new pad to boot. Now, all joking aside, I was grateful for that small mercy. And even though my car is not the best looking vehicle on the lot, it's mine, it's paid for, and it gets me from A to B. Well, for now or at least until I can afford something a little better. Now, it got me thinking about how dissatisfied some people are with their lives, homes, jobs, etc. And we're all guilty of this in one way or another. Yes, even little old Zanny G gets a little dissatisfied from time to time. Now, I don't think it's wrong to want to better oneself, but we should be willing to put in the work to achieve said betterness, or the zeal for betterness can turn into... Yes, you've guessed it, bitterness. Now, I enjoy nothing more than saving for something I need and then getting to the stage of finally owning it. Ambition and wanting to progress is totally human and natural and essential for us all to build on our drive and make something better. Now, there is a necessity for me to forward plan in order to be able to continue my evolution. And after two years in radio, now I have this TV show, which is amazing and such a privilege. And using a local TV show to develop my skills and build my audience is a phenomenally interesting situation. I'm so grateful to those who have continued to support me and share my work and my links and to revel in my success with me. Now, there will always be a segment of those around you who cannot share your joy or move on with you. Now, the key for me has been learning to roll with the ups and the downs, as it will never be plain sailing, but enjoying the process is just as imperative as reaching the goal. That was my soapbox for this week. If you'd like to come on and get on your soapbox, email me at xander at xandergib.com. That's xander at xandergib.com. And now it's time for Out and About. So 
So we sent our roving reporter, Laurie Nebo. Yes, that Laurie Nebo, the singer from episode one who couldn't quite grasp the ideology of quick fire questions out onto the streets of the Bronx to find out exactly what you think about what's going on in these United States today. Check it out. Thank you, Xander. I'm here in the Boogie Down Bronx to ask people how they feel about Ebola and is the United States ready for Ebola? So what do you think about this spread of this disease, Ebola, and is the United States ready for it? Well, I think it's very crazy because I never heard of this. And I think that New York City is not ready because we don't know a cure for this. And I think we should be prepared and look for answers and, you know, try to go to Africa and see what's going on in there before they, you know, go fly it over there and bring the disease over here. Because this can, you know, this is crazy. I, I, why would you bring the, the stuff over here? We need to be protected. I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if we're ready for this. But I'm telling you, America, please be safe. I am definitely concerned. Um, I'm not prepared. The United States, I think they should be prepared. Um, as far as the Ebola virus is concerned, that's been around since the early 70s when they first um, diagnosed it. Right now in America, I don't think it should be cause for concern, in my opinion. Okay. I think the hospitals are good enough here. They know how to contain it. Well, I'm scared of Ebola because people might catch it. And Ebola came from, I think, from South Africa. And what was the other question? I forgot. Do you think the United States is prepared for it? No, I don't think they're prepared for it. Because um, it already spread it across the country. Like, like almost like half of it is going to, like, it has Ebola. Like, Florida, New York, Texas. It's going to keep on spreading and spreading. And people are going to end up dying more. And then it's going to be horrible seeing everybody dying. It's going to be sad when you see your family dying too. It's going to be hard. I don't know if I'm afraid, I'm more concerned because actually they, they were so slack in letting this guy in the country without even checking. You know, they knew that there was an epidemic from these people coming from West Africa. So, you know, they should have had a little more prepared in having people coming back, you know, especially when they knew they were all sick. You know, he had some fever, so they should have checked that a little more. And I think they didn't. So they weren't prepared. Now they're prepared, but they're they, they panicking now. Yeah. So we just wanted to ask you, what do you think about Ebola? And do you think the United States is ready for it? No. Ebola? No. Okay. And how do you feel? I feel that it's very dangerous for um, the people that is in, um, is in the hospital and the people who's outside, when they touch everything, you never know if they got Ebola. And what do you feel? I feel that like that's dangerous because, because, yeah. So we're asking about Ebola. Do you think the United States is prepared for it? Where do you think it came from? And how do you feel about it? Definitely the United States is prepared for it. Uh, how do I feel about it? It's dangerous. And uh, what was the other third one, was it you saying? <laughs> what was it, uh... Do you think uh, people are for it, afraid of it? Or do you think we're, we're prepared? People are afraid of it. And are we definitely prepared. Yeah. Where do you think it came from? Where do I think it came from? They say Africa, then they say it came from Europe. Uh, no one really knows the answer, the true answer. No one really knows. So tell us, what do you think about the disease from Africa, Ebola? And is the United States prepared for this disease? It's not prepared, because we don't know where it's coming from or how it's coming. And many people is entering from Africa, we are getting their shots, so we don't know if they got Ebola. And Ebola is a nasty disease. It is. So what do you think about Ebola? Do you think the United States is prepared for it? No, no I don't think they're prepared for it because they wasn't ready for it. That's my question on that. All 
right? Where do you think it came from? I heard it came from Africa, but I'm not sure. Do you think it was man-made, or do you think it was it came from Africa, out of somewhere out of the ground? Just a normal disease that pops up every now and again. I mean, this is the first time I heard of it, but diseases that come and go. Hopefully, they have a cure for it, but other than that, I'm not sure. Thank you very much for your input. We were just wondering, what do you think about the outbreak of Ebola, and do you think the United States is prepared for this? We're definitely not prepared for it. Um, a lot of people is going to get sick. It's killing people quick, and they don't even have the people that got sick off it already is dying. You know, they don't have the cure for it. This is, this is true. Do you think um, possibly there will be a vaccine? I hope so. Okay, my concern, I think they, they do it wrong because they check the people right here in, in, in the airport. And I think it's wrong. They got to check the people in Africa. Not when they come to the United States. They got to make sure in Africa, not in the United States. In my mind, I think something's wrong. You understand what I mean? Because I see the news every day. And they check the people when they come to the United States. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of people sick. They got to do it in Africa before they come to the United States. That's, you know, that's what I think. Hi. Hi. We want to ask you about what, what you think about the disease Ebola. And do you think the United States is prepared for it? And where do you think it came from? Um, according to what I heard, I think it's from Africa. And um, I think it's devastating. I think it's a bad thing that's, you know, happened to us. And I'm just praying to God that, they, you know, they'll find a, a solution to the problem. You know, and um, I think what you need to do is uh, the ones that are uh, contaminated, keep them, keep them isolated, get the uh, the medication and the stuff that they need to to cure that, and make sure that no one else it doesn't spread on to to the rest of the civilization. You know. Where do you think it came from? Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even have the slightest clue. But uh, like I said, uh, as far as I know, I think it's from Africa. So, thank you very much, sir. I hope you know that the, that there's a cure. I too, I do too. Well, let's pray. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mike. There is no way that I could ever say goodbye to you, oh no, you're in my heart and soul, your love has made me whole, don't ever turn away, turn away from me, we met just at the brink, we had to stop and think it out, through and through, though we both had a past, Wanted something to last, had such a lot to give, but had no one to give it to. Now I got you, now I got you, now I got you, babe. Don't ever wanna let you go, won't stand for second best, cause you are all I need to know. We are entwined, yeah, lover. You are mine, don't need no other. Some say love is a force. I know it's true, of course, from you, oh yeah, I tremble when you're near, all that has disappeared, it's gone, there's none, cause you're the one, there is no way to say, no way to just convey one word, ecstasy, you hit me like a truck, just can't believe I love. I'm on a clap so high now I know why can't say goodbye now I got you now I got you babe don't ever wanna let you go won't stand for second best cause you are all I need to know we are entwined yeah lover you are mine don't need no other You are all I need to know We are entwined, yeah, lover 
The phoenix from the ashes rose in the heat of satisfaction. Things of addiction. Things of addiction. Burning to my soul. Things of addiction. Things of addiction. Make me less than one. Awesome water on me. Damp on the flames. I ain't got a clue why you're playing this game. I feel the Babies, I continue to perspire Do I withstand the heat off? Do I get out of the fire? Flames of addiction Flames of addiction Burn into my soul So what are your prospects when you leave school and what do you want to do in the future um i want to play basketball and like when i leave school i like i go to the courts play basketball and like that's about it okay thank you so there you have it xander most people are afraid and they do believe that the united states is not prepared for ebola Xander, it's back to you in the studio. Thanks to Laurie Nebo for checking in with the folks in our borough. Make sure to check her out on Twitter at Sister Nebo. And now it's time for Watch This Space. Look out! Now, working in the business they call show has given me the privilege of meeting so many talented people. And two of those said people are Salem Katsaski and Jeff Christian, both of whom were involved in the making of a new movie called Spy Darlings, a horror musical written by Salem Katsaski with music and songs by Jeff Christian. Poverty-stricken Eden and Matilda have enough trouble just getting through the days. Their landlord is trying to terrorize them, and strange things seem to be going on at the place where Matilda works. But when Eden buys a pet spider, the real troubles begin. Let's take a look at the trailer. We, we owe our landlord around two years' rent. Darling, you know, I heard the other day that in Thailand, if you're homeless, you can just live by the beach. I thought that was so you. You're useless. That is very rude. Bad boys don't get any wishes. It's going to kill us. I know it. It's going to kill us.
know, spiders create their own world, and, and the primitive peoples think that they, they spin the future. My friend, welcome to Juicy Go! You filthy! That was indeed Spy Darlings coming to a movie theater near you soon. Make sure to follow the Spy Darlings page on Facebook and also Salem and Jeff, respectively. Good luck, guys. And now it's time for the news according to Sarah Boyles. So this is a new item on Zandermonium, comedy at its very best. Now, they do say that humor is relative, and clearly whoever they are have not met my relatives. Oh, no, sirree. I'm convinced this woman developed her sense of humor living in the suburbs. Now, it's rumored she might be running for local office, and let's face it, she'd be great as the minister for fun. She's sassy, she's sarcastic, and she's someone to keep your eye on for sure. Give it up. For the news, according to Sarah Boyles. Thank you, Xander. Hi, I'm Sarah Boyles, and this is the news, according to me. The United States has done massive airstrikes on the terrorist group ISIS recently. Now, my biggest problem with the terrorist group ISIS is the name. I like my terrorist groups to sound a little bit more Muslim-y, if you know what I mean, and not so much like a car that my grandma would drive. In Homeland News, the Department of Justice has asked the officers in Ferguson, Missouri to please stop wearing bracelets that say, I am Darren Wilson. Now these are supportive bracelets for the officer that shot an unarmed black teen August 9th of this year. And the teen did die. They have also asked their officers to quit shooting unarmed black teens to death. I have great news for you if you love the movie Frozen and you're a super trampy person. You can be the beloved character from the movie Olaf this Halloween. They have a cute costume out. I guess I missed the part of the movie where Olaf gave um, away a bunch of free snow jobs because that's what that costume looks like. In celebrity news, longtime Hollywood heartthrob George Clooney recently tied the knot. I know this is shocking. He had an extravagant Venetian wedding. It was beautiful. Um, I just don't understand how someone with the charm, personality, and looks of a used car salesman could make it so far in Hollywood. Now, George wants us all to think of him as the new Clark Gable. But I'll always remember him as this. In other celebrity news, apparently Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake are starring in two new iPhone 6 commercials. Hashtag how much money do you really need? Hashtag can I borrow some? Hashtag don't think, just say yes. Speaking of the iPhone 6, 
It's been reported that Queen Elizabeth is not very fond of selfies. She finds them strange. To which I replied, Queen Elizabeth is still alive? Who knew? Um, in sports news, the Kansas City Royals made it to the playoffs. This is the first time they have made it to the playoffs since 1985. To put that in perspective, I was five years old, and this man was the talk of the town. But seriously, Kansas City, congratulations. Maybe now you can be known for something other than your meth production and your delicious barbecue sauce. And it's football season, and you know what that means. NFL players can now officially stop drinking and beating their wives, and the fans can start. Happy football season. And I'd like to close my first news segment with my little segment I like to call My Hope for Humanity. John Heater, also known as Napoleon Dynamite from the movie Napoleon Dynamite, heard that Mary Elizabeth, who's a 12-year-old battling leukemia right now, watched his movie to make it through her challenges that she faces, the pain, the sickness. So he made her a video of him telling her good luck, feel better, keep your head up in a Napoleon Dynamite character, in his character that she loves. And I thought that was very, very nice of him. So hats off to you, John Heater. You gave me hope for humanity again. And um, JT and Jimmy Fallon, I wasn't joking. I'll be waiting on that check. Hashtag I'm desperate. And back to you in the studio, Xander. Thanks. Now that was the inimitable Sarah Boyles. Make sure to follow her on social media. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for on today's show. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll join us again. Don't forget to join my mailing list at xandergib.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Check out Salem uh, Kapsaski and Jeff Christian, Laurie Newbo, and the hilarious Sarah Boyles. Today's show was brought to you by The Color Purple, the number 86, and courtesy of Madrigal Media. Thanks to everyone who contributed today, and most of all, thanks to you for watching. Stay cool in the boogie down, and we'll see you next time on Xandermonium. I love you all.